Why, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Anime Club. I'm Nick Knack. With me is the Great Lord Warren. Hello. Realm Shifter. Vash. Stampede. And Seki. Vash is baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I will not be taking comments on that. It's just true. <laughs> <laughs> so this... Oh, go ahead. I'm just wondering. Do you mean... Vash is your baby girl, or you are Vash's no, Vash baby girl. is baby girl. Vash is the okay. baby girl. That's that's the, the sentence is self-explanatory. Vash is baby. No, girl. No, no, I thought that was applying to you. Nope. No, no, no. That's okay. just applying to Vash. Yep. Okay. This week, Trigun Stampede. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm I'm really excited for this because I I want so I've I've seen the original Trigun mm-hmm. and I've read the manga. Um, and so I watched Stampede when it came out originally, um, because it's one of those series that I like really enjoyed, um, when I was younger. Um, and it's of, we're not going to talk about the original Trigun because technically the original Trigun is still in the hat. So if, if we were to pull it out, then we would make comparisons between the two. It's not really fair to make the comparison when you all haven't seen yeah, I don't, the original mm. and it's, it's a different series. Has anyone besides yeah. Seki seen the original? I, I saw like three episodes of the original Trigun. I never that's, finished that's it. That's not though. enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I never yeah. finished it though. Yeah, so, so we're not going to be discussing the original, but it is fairly different, not in story content per se, but in the way that the story is told. Yes. I think. Um, and I, th- I think the way that they've done it here really benefits the series. Um, so we watched the first 12 episodes. Um, mm. There is actually a final part in production. So this is a two-part series. Mm. Um, and it's been in production since since this one released and before that. Like, mm-hmm. they, were all, they were always going to do two parts on this. Um, mm. So I'm not worried about us having to, like, wait super long for it to come out. I think they're just taking their time. Because this series was in production for a long time time i think it was like five six years that this series was in production because the the uh 3d cg models um weren't even completed until like a a year before the trailer oh wow um and they'd been working on it like years before that um because this was one of this was one of those so it's it's done by studio orange and this is one of studio orange's it was one of the first works that they were considering doing when they moved from doing co-productions. Because the first couple... It's it's a pretty young studio. It started in 2004. Uh, but their first group of like animes they did were co-productions with other studios, right? So they did like Majestic Prince, Black Bullet, Active Raid, Nom 9, Dimension W. Those were all um, co- co-productions up to 2016. Um, so Land of the Lustrous in 2017 was their first mm. non-co-produced work. Mm. Um, and then they did Beastars yes. and Beastars 2 uh, um, and Beastars the final season. And then they co-produced Godzilla Singular Point huh. in 2021. But they've been working on Trigun since like 20, 2016, 2017. Um, and a lot has gone into the series in that time. And I think it really shows in, yes. in the way that the series yeah. sounds and looks and i i personally so here's a, another little tidbit so they did not go with the with the original music from the the older show mm-hmm. and they didn't use the same music producer right um mm-hmm. they went with a totally different person um and they did that because the way that they changed the the way that the series was done mm-hmm. made it so that the the music for the original series just didn't quite fit the story they were trying to tell anymore Right. So they got all new music done for it, which I'm super a fan of. I think it sounded great. Yeah, because um, this this show is more of a um, it's more of a reimagining of the original series, isn't it? Um, it, no, it's it's the original series, but it's focusing on telling a different story, uh, okay. like uh, in terms of like depth and character development mm. and and kind of what you're actually seeing. Uh, okay. Um, but so the the um. The producer who who went to the the author to like bring up making a new series apparently mm. so the original author actually really likes the original series mm. and the original author uh, told him well that like the the older series is everything I wanted and more so you can pretty much do anything you want because I've I've already gotten what I want and even mm. if you're even if you just make it a little bit better it'll be way better than I ever expected so mm. they had like pretty much full they had full like they had full creative control on full those. creative yeah. control to do whatever 
sort of whatever they wanted. Um, and I think I like the decision to go with the 3D CG animation. Yeah, it actually um, looked really good here. Yeah, they opinion. did it really well. And yeah. when you think back, like, I know you guys haven't seen it, but the original one looks like it came out in the 19... 19- hundreds right. of anime so oh, yeah. it's it's a vibe it, it's, it's a vibe it, i i saw like a little bit tidbits of here it gives me very uh fist of the north star-esque vibes with its yeah because there's a few references to the original mm. animation throughout throughout the series yeah uh but yeah i i thought that was pretty interesting because the original series came out in 1998 yeah. um so it's currently 12 episodes um we talked about what the what the studio's done. Um, the person who did the composition, the music, mm-hmm. has also worked on uh, Mirai Nikki, Shokugeki no Soma, Fate, Colored, Liner, Prisma, Ilya. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is this? The music? The music yeah. producer. Oh, okay. Actually, the composer. Like the yeah. yeah, the composer. Um, and a, a pretty interesting kind of combination of other stuff. I see some, like, Dr. Stone's in there. Um... Some good stuff in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I recognize a lot of the stuff here. They also did Free. Yeah, okay. He he also did Free. Um, So, yeah, I think they picked a good choice on Music Composer. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah. Yeah. I I definitely like this one, because, I mean, obviously, like you mentioned, like, they were the ones who did um, Land of the Lustrious and Beastars, and they have probably some of the best, like, 3D animation out there, as far as, like, 3D modeling is concerned for anime. I'm I'm gonna be honest, I think that's also just a factor of this, this feels like a passion project, per se, rather than... A, a seasonal production to get something out. Like the fact that they started working on it in 2016, 2017. Right. And then it didn't come out till 2023. Yes. Right? Mm, Cause like, it came out January, 2023. It's like, still technically ongoing. Cause the final part's in production. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the fact they didn't just pump this out like as like another just another seasonal anime really shows because it shows in the production quality and just kind of the general scene structure of everything mm-hmm. and like how like tightly knit and smooth the overall animation feels. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the animation of like the OP and the ED really, oh. really shows like how much effort they put in to say that OP seems almost like a movie like quality. And that's really surprising for usually what is a, a seasonal anime budget. Yes. So, yeah. I I love the OP and ED. Just gonna start start on that with this. I love the OP and the ED. Mm. I think the the kind of poignant feelings evoked by the OP, especially if you this one's worth it to sit and put mm. subtitles on and read the lyrics. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. It's worth it in both the OP and the ED for this show because. Both songs are seem to be at least. I'm not sure if they're actually designed for the show, but I think they are I based on what I know about the music production. And it it feels like it when you see what they're saying, like the sound mm. of it, and then the words. They feel designed for the show. The opening theme is called uh, "To Me" by um, Kvi Baba, and the ending theme is called "Hoshi no Kuzu." Mm-hmm. Um, and I adored them. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. Mm. Um, and the and the animation for both was great and you know on, on the topic of kind of visual effects uh, much like a few other series we've seen on the channel Magical Girl Ore is the one that comes to mind for me mm. um, at the end of every episode like right at the very end of the credits before the episode flips to the next one there's a couple seconds spent on a piece of like really beautiful like art like it's a it's a piece of art for the series mm. that's shown on screen and I think they look really lovely yeah and some of them make slight references to the way that the original series looked, which I think is really fun. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have, like, too much to add as far as the original series goes. Um, I, I'm mostly for time-saving. I didn't really get a chance to, like, watch the OP and ED more than, like, once. And I thought that they were okay, but it was mostly just because I kind of remember the original OP for Trigun when I did watch the few episodes that I did. And it's very different. It's very different. Yeah. It's very tonally different. Uh, I think as far as the OP goes for me, I was impressed by the animation of it. I don't know that I was that impressed by the actual song, though. Because it's different in the sense that it's a much slower OP song yeah. than most animes are. like, And this doesn't really... like Until you take into context, I guess, the 
whole rest of the series, it doesn't really start to make sense until then. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think it's it's maybe important to note that the, the producers themselves said that the, the focus of this series is supposed to be Vash's... The, Vash's history and his interpersonal relationships with the people he's met mm -hmm. rather than just focusing on Vash and the crazy stuff he does. Right. Right. It's, it's supposed to focus on the relationships and how that shapes him and how he shapes other people. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a more somber tone show. Yes. Um, especially it, than what I remember the I original being. The yeah. OP fits that, especially if you read the lyrics um, and understand what's being said. It does feel thematically appropriate and then I lay like, is that I also just like the song but that's a personal preference yeah I thought it was great uh for the song I I could take or leave it I if I had the subtitles I might like it more but I don't so yeah Crunchyroll had the subtitles yeah I didn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might go back and listen to this song some more, like with the subtitle context, and there might even be like a full version of this song, so I might listen to that. Yeah. Um. So the story. So, so, so the story. This is really fun. I really enjoy this. It was not the tone I was expecting, just because I had some initial expectations because I did remember well, a little let's, bit of the original. Let's, let's put the original series aside yes. now and just mm -hmm. talk about Stampede. Yes, but Stampede yeah. as a show I really enjoyed a lot of like the characters and everything. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to put a pin just like on like where like I mean, you don't have to put a pin in something. Yeah, yeah that's true. I don't. I don't. Yeah, really it's not. I, it's not required. You could yeah. just say no notes. <laughs> yeah, that, no notes. I guess. Like I was going somewhere with this, but honestly, like, yeah, it it's good. I definitely enjoy this series, but it's it's hard to say if there's any one thing that stood out to me actually about it because it's mm. good. It's definitely there, but. I just can't put, like, anything specifically that stood out to me other than really, like, realistically the animation and production quality. So. I think in some ways the the way that this is animated can almost take away from paying attention to the rest of the show because the way it's animated mm. is pretty fucking unique and the way that they've done it's really good. Yeah. But when considering the show itself um, and, and kind of the episodes and the characters and all that and that sort of thing, I think it was... Have, it was absolutely a win for the studio. Fascinating. I think it was well well done. And I think a lot of the reasons why I feel that way are because as I'm watching, there's so... First of all, we, we've got this amazing setting, right? Like, post-deep space exploration. Yes. Um, apocalyptic survivalist sort of thing, right? Like, like almost humans... A almost a Mad max -esque. Yeah, like, like, mm. like, humans know that there was a space age and this, mm. this great expanse, like, expansion into science and engineering yeah. and technology, but they've lost a lot of that, right? Because mm. of societal collapse. And so we're, we're in that societal collapse and it's, it's so Wild West. And I mean, I, I could even, in the background of the music, hear actual, like, Wild West tracks, like, mm. playing at certain points. Like, the same things you'd see in, like, one of the one of the American TV shows from, like, the 40s and 50s, you know? Right. Like, Gunsmoke or something. The same, like, chords playing when they're doing, like, a duel or something. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the same thing happening, and I, it's fine. It's not a problem. Okay. <laughs> We've literally recorded through worse. We recorded an entire episode through the sound of gardeners at Nick Next Place. Oh, yeah, you're right. And yeah. did not notice. Right. I just want to be sure. It's fine. Um, so, yeah. And so, you get this whole Wild West theme kind of going on, but at the same time, it's like cyberpunk. Right. And futuristic at times. Mm -hmm. Especially with, with Vash. Oh, right? Yeah. Vash yeah. and Millions Knives um, and the characters who are obviously a part of that futuristic sort of thing that did exist at one point and no longer does. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then just the absolute shit show that is humanity in crisis. Oh yeah. I love that. Just, just the, like what, what humans will stoop to, what choices people will make in, in desperate mm -hmm. situations, you know, like he, he, 
the, f- the first four episodes, right? Like, he saves this town a couple years back, mm. and then he saves it again, and yet they still choose to turn on him because of human need and desperation, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and he can't like he he understands he he gets it. It's hard not to understand it, right? Mm. When you when you know what people are living through, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think you fi- I think you put the words to what I was trying to say, but I just couldn't figure. I just couldn't think through it in my head for some reason. So that really helped right there. I like the story, and I can understand some of the characters that like uh, motives. But also, like, because those motives, it kind of makes me hate certain characters more than I probably should. No, you're you're supposed to hate certain characters for the choice they make, right? Because you look at these characters and you're like, I would never make that choice. But you've also never been in that situation. So you yeah. can add, like, I hate the woman who, who turned on him, right? In the oh, first no, I'm episodes. talking about more Vash. Oh, well, Vash is... Vash is an idiot. That's why he's baby girl. We love him. <laughs> I, I think I, I think that I think this is actually the the one part that I uh, that I really like about the show is is actually the difference between uh, Vash and Millions Knives mm. is kind of their whole philosophical differences. Yeah, Ash does, or Vash doesn't really have like a. Um, a philosophy, a guiding philosophy. Well, he, he than, doesn't have a guiding philosophy. Okay, other than like, he just has a, a deep love for humanity is what it is. He's so intrinsically tied to humanity in yeah. a way that Millions Knives isn't. Yes. In any way. But yeah. what I like is how Millions Knives really tries to make Vash see his way in, in that because you, you get kind of Millions Knives perspective like on humanity, mm-hmm. like, we we had no future. We we were plants. We were uh, we're just meant to be essentially slaves to humans, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so I want us to have a free will to have a future essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of that was a I think probably my favorite aspect of the show was just the whole conundrum mm-hmm. of you know what do you do with a a a race of beings that are so uh, subservient to humans and humans essentially kind of prolong their lives because what's explained is that the uh plants otherwise if they're without human supervision will just expend all of their energy in one burst and just die yeah so yeah i i love i love me the dichotomy between um a, a fucking sociopath and someone who is far too empathetic when they both have good points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love me that. I love me that interaction where it's just like, I hate humans. I don't. Okay, but here's why I hate them. Yeah. Because they're yeah. awful. Let's and, get rid of them. And then uh and then the good and then and then the good one is just like erm actually. <laughs> erm uh, actually. I, I would actually like to see more of like uh that old man reporter and like how he came old like all that just like uh nihilistic that would be kind of cool pessimistic old man yeah like what what drove him to that Uh, but i i wonder maybe if because it seems like what he's implying right when Uh, he talks to the younger reporter is that nothing no actions in particular drove him to be this just surviving in Mm. the world Mm -hmm. drove him to this level of like pessimism and nihilism (laughs) like he also started more fresh-faced and you know ha and just years and years of living and being worn down by the situation um, has just gotten kind of, him just to kind this of, point. Just kind of turn him yeah. into this grizzled, fucking yeah. pessimistic, kind of almost almost piece of shit like mm-hmm. kind yeah. of person. And then, of course, you know one of my favorite characters who we haven't touched on yet, Wolfwood. Yes, <laughs> Wolfwood was great. I loved Wolfwood. <laughs> Wolfwood's fantastic. Yeah, he's not that bad. Yeah. He's pretty fucking funny. Knickknack has been conspicuously silent for the last 19 minutes almost. And I would like to call that out. I'm expecting that Knickknack is not going to have some very uh, tasty. I don't think Knickknack enjoyed this. So I want to preface this saying I like the series. But I'm immediately going to backhand compliment it and say I like. I think the setting really carries the series. I mean, the setting is fantastic. The setting is amazing. And the setting is a, a large portion of their backstory. And it reminds me, like, it remi- It feels like Dune meets Mad Max. Oh my yeah. god, half yes. of my notes are like Dune. 
Dune. Dune. Dune. Yeah. Dune. Yeah. I love the setting. I feel like the actual story itself kind of peaked around episode three or four. Nah, man, because you even you even had Worm Lady. Because I thought Zazi, and that's why I like. I don't know. I don't know if you caught my facial expression there. I made a face when you mentioned Wolfwood because that's around the point where I start really checking out of the series. I like Wolfwood. I think he's great. I don't know it. I feel like the series was fighting with its own identity as you move on with the series. Like at times the. The overarching story... I thought Knives, in his introduction, was a really, really menacing villain. And then we come out of that and go into quite a few episodes of very Villain of the Week uh, mm. storytelling. And I don't think it fits the tone of the show that they were doing. But and a lot of, of it feels kind A lot of it felt kind of throwaway. Mm. I, I think... But so I, then what's probably your main issue with it is the... It felt like the story was a bit rushed for the sake of... Yeah. Kind of getting to the end. And I kind of agree there. I think the pacing could have been a little bit better. I think this would have benefited from, like, a few more episodes. Like, I don't think it needed, like, a full thing, but I think it needed to give a few of the arcs uh, a bit more time than they did. Mm-hmm. But I, I also feel like it's it's maybe... I don't really see a million's knives. I don't. I don't necessarily see him as like a villain per se, so much as an antagonist. And I think there's a difference there. Um, Regardless, my point, like the reason my problems are still like yeah. still the same. Like that, that doesn't really factor into anything I just said that much. Like I, I like million knives. I do like him. I just felt like we didn't. I don't mind the little kind of one-off bad guys because I think it it's interesting to see sort of on a... Because to me it seems like that's sort of like the showing you what the norm is. Like for people traveling around and moving is like, oh, well, unfortunately, you know, because of the way that society is and because of the way that humans are, like this is what happens when you're, you know, moving and traveling around on a day-to-day basis. Um, and it, and it doesn't help that kind of Vash is with them and seems to just draw trouble towards him no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, but when you tell that kind of story, I, I kind of, it meant that I didn't feel, I didn't feel that invested in most of the combat, like most of the fights in the series because of mm-hmm. that. I don't think you're necessarily supposed to feel invested in the combat. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't. I don't think that's the point. This. This isn't. Yeah. This the show isn't, where you're this getting invested like into my, that. This isn't like a my hero kind of. You're really fighting for ideals type situation. This is more like you're there. These people are fighting for their survival kind of. An and it's just something that happens, and so it's shown. Whereas I think the the vast majority of what you're actually supposed to be putting a lot of stock into is the stuff with millions knives. Um, and the overall situation of the world. And he actively Vash's... appears for like three episodes in the entire series. Yeah. yeah. So like I, I don't know like, for me the pacing just for me did not work with the tone of the show. I definitely think that this show could have benefited from like maybe not for like twenty four episodes, but I think like eighteen episodes would have mm. been good. Like give it a little bit of extra time to cook on some of the ideas that it did present yeah. in the mm. show, but not too much to overstay its welcome and feel like, it, okay, this is kind of dragging out. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, generally where I'm at here. I will say this. I feel like uh, Knives is more of a neutral evil on the alignment chart right there. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, no, no, it's it's not a, really a question, because, like, Millions Knives is not, like, not committing evil for evil's sake, right? Yeah. Millions Knives has a reason for what he's doing. It's a reason that is somewhat understandable. Um, and one that you can follow, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, like, that. there's no issue with what he's doing, per se, from his mind. Yes, because, um, I mean, he's just really looking out for the uh, the best interest of his mm-hmm. species as a whole. Yeah, yeah, the independence. Yes. Um, Vash is the one out here who's, like, campaigning for a whole nother species that really has not treated them well and et cetera. Yeah, treated so, like, them well and has shown time and time again that they have no real like right to be doing what they're doing. And yet in spite yeah. of that, he still, he still vouches for that. Yeah. yeah he's the foolhardy fool. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There, are, there is a problem like that. I don't, uh, with the series release for me, it, it seems like, uh, the people who work for knives, like, I, I don't understand like, 
What what are they getting out of this pretty much? Like Well, why? so the doctor and this is briefly mentioned, like this is like a blink and you miss it kind of mm -hmm. detail, is that the device that he has in his head prevents him from dying. He can't die until Knives has completed his mission. Yeah, but like at, I feel like he could have just not done that and like still been okay, I feel. But I, I don't know. Like, it seems like just for that thing, why, it's not why, worth it. Why do any people choose to work with the sort of the, the antagonistic side in any story? Everyone has reasons, whether they be coercion or personal motivation. Yeah. There's always yeah. going to be a reason why someone is siding with the objectively antagonistic force. Yes. And in um, his case, it was more so like not not just because he was forced to. It was also because he felt it, it was a sort of penance for him. Mm -hmm. For the crimes that he committed in his in doing his experiments to move humanity into a different future, where he essentially experimented on them and turned them into different kind of I mean, test subjects. It's, it's it's the opposite side of like Vash is choosing to to try to save humans to atone for what mm. he allowed millions knives to do unwittingly. You mm. know, mm -hmm. like it's all it all goes back to what what they think is their fault yes and how they think they can help and sort of deal with what they've caused mm. right and in vash's case that's protect humanity from millions knives and destruction and in millions knives case that's get rid of fucking humanity because they destroyed us yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's a little bit more better it's just like at the end of the day, it's still kind of cult-like, and usually in cult-like structures, usually there's something that some people want, at least for, like, the higher-ups. Like, there's a defined want. Well, I mean, there so, was yeah. sort of a want out of that scientist guy, considering his experiments, but, I mean, if he, if he didn't really like it, then and we kind yeah. of already explained it to you, then it, it's just... I'm, it's just something you didn't like and that's I mean fine. like no? I, I understand like the uh wanting like to live longer thing but it doesn't he, seem... he didn't want to live longer he was Sorry. forced to live longer yeah. right? and he, he can't die mm. until he completes it, like I think this is an example he wants to die uh, yes. he wants to be done and mm. he cannot be done until he achieves that which is keeping him alive oh okay yeah he, he wants to die so that one's more of a threatening situation okay yeah yeah he, he wants yeah, but but okay. the the plant in his head is not letting him until mm. he completes what Millions Knives wants him to do. Yeah. Oh, when the heck did we see? There's a plant in his. Sorry, head. not plant, but the thing. The, there's a machine. Oh, there's yeah. like those little bits in his head. In yeah. That you see. Uh -huh. yeah. No, no, this character's motivation is that he wants to be done, and the uh -huh. only way to do that is to pursue the action course he's currently pursuing. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it make more sense? A, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. It's it's not often you see characters who just like want to die or want to be done, but I think that's always an interesting tack to take it's an, it's with an the interesting... character because that's not something that you, it's not something that most people look at and go, huh, I get it. You know, it's it's something like, for for all that our mm. society has um, sort of memed the idea of ugh, I crave death, you know, or I want to mm. die. Right. Um, we're not actually craving death most of the time yeah. it's it's a meme but in this case he does want to be done yes i kind of feel like you could just jump off the platform though and uh i mean he, maybe he could like if he got himself oh, no. eviscerated but does he really want to go through that or would he rather just yeah. go out quietly eh? i mean he's probably afraid yeah, mm, that and I'm well. pretty sure just, the just millions... because you want to die doesn't mean you want to die in a horrific and painful way. Yeah, <laughs> some and, people and just pretty... want to pass quietly in their sleep. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm pretty sure millions knives wouldn't let him kill himself in a horrific way anyway. Yeah, millions yeah. knives needs him. Yeah. yeah, and millions knives seems pretty much able to do just about anything he wants. Yeah, yeah. To be quite honest. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that was the only problem. The rest of the stuff, I kind of, like, I understood the motivations behind, like, everyone else. Like, just the cult-like structure is a little bit just, eh, for me. Mm -hmm. And that's probably because also, like, we haven't really gone into the cult-like structure that much as well.
So yeah. I think the least probably developed part of the show for me was probably the worms. Because they were supposed to be like a force that were that was kind of on the planet that most of the humans reside on there, and yeah. yet they felt kind of undercooked as a species, in my opinion. Well, they're they're but the the thing with that is they're mm. they're not important. Yeah, yeah, they're not important to the main part of the plot right now. No, because but they still in, they. But the thing is, is they still introduce them as a sort of antagonist. Well, no, they're they're not an antagonist antagonist per se they're a condition of living in no man's land mm. right like any other part of the environment that yeah. is hostile and not welcoming to humans mm -hmm. um and that makes them a part of the background and the setting but not necessarily an antagonistic force per mm. se um it's like it's like us living on a planet with bugs that can kill us you know right like there yeah. are spiders uh, that can like bite us and kill us at any time they're not necessarily an antagonist but it's a condition of living on Earth, right? But also so, at the same, but also at the same time, the the people will also kill those worms and use them for meat. Yeah, so yeah. that's yeah. another it's another thing. Yeah, so it's it's a, it's a condition of survival and and a testament to the hostile nature of the planet. But much like in Dune, the worms are not actively attempting to fucking kill people. Mm -hmm. um, they just pop up when disturbed mm -hmm. or, you know, in the case of, you know, some characters can, like, call them and control them mm -hmm. somewhat, but that's the character's agenda, not the worms. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you know. Also, like, that, uh, the worm person is... Zazie? Yeah, that, I don't remember their name at all. Zazie. Yeah. Uh, is supposed to be, like, the coalition of worms, of speaking voice for them, so I would more say they're more of a third party... I am the Zazie, so, and yeah. I speak for the worms. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, as of right now, it's still largely unimportant to the story mm. that's being told. Because the story that's being told in Trigun Stampede is Vash and Millions Knives mm. and, like, the conflict of humanity and survival. Mm. Like, this series is focusing more on that than it mm. is on sort of environmental and incidental things that are mm. happening. Like, obviously we know that like the whole point of like experimenting on humans and, and stuff like that is like, you want to make them able to say to survive no man's land, right? Like mm. people need to survive in this land, but that's more of like a background setting sort of thing for the most part in this 12 episode section. Yeah. I don't know if it'll change in the final part. Like who knows? Mm. Cause I don't know if the final part's going to be more of just like a straight continuation of this or if they're going to pivot a little bit and maybe kind of portray a different story somewhat. But yeah. Uh, considering where they left off at the end of the of, of this series, I think that they're going to try and move something in, some things in a different direction. Mm -hmm. But that's just me. Yeah. yeah. I do wonder, did you guys kind of get weirded out by like the uh, plants and the uh, looking like pregnant ladies? Because like, I thought it was more like rebirth and they giving them a soul. So like, the plants will look exactly the same rather than like they will then actually give birth no, no i didn't no, have a problem with that no not yeah, really it was an aesthetic choice yeah it mm. was an it, aesthetic choice and it was and it was literally yeah. stated that that millions knives was artificially impregnating them anyways so mm. yeah i yeah. this is just one of those cases. it's sci-fi mm. yeah like it, people like, just imagine sci-fi to look different ways and mm. i don't really have an issue with that i mean yeah yeah seen other questionable stuff in other shows so i mean i think i've just gotten a bit too used to uh isekais and everything else kind of man you need to like defrag your brain probably you need to like give that a good wash on the washboard you know just i think <laughs> go at too, it i think there's too much brain rot i think it's beyond saving <laughs> no i think it's more of, sometimes uh... sometimes vorn you just need to like remove everything <laughs> just remove it all it's okay just open your skull take your brain out it's okay yeah. it's not yeah, gonna hurt uh, you that doesn't work because then I uh, can't do my mechanical stuff so <laughs> yeah. it's, it's okay it's okay we're out of school for the summer you got time to just yeah, and then it's, I have to draw that back in. You know how much stuff I have to cram back in there. Yeah, it's but you a, just you don't cram back in the the anime stuff. You see, it's okay. It's okay. We can actually just do a very simple solution. All it requires is a lobotomy. <laughs> <laughs> Volo's really good at giving them. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, my freaking uh, the closet door hinges are almost about to break off. If I if I open, it's not going to go back in anymore. <laughs> Even if I take the anime stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Yep. Fucking hilarious. Uh, 
I don't know. Do you guys got anything else? Oh, we have to do waifu wars. Oh, Ooh. yes. Waifu, waifu wars. Waifu wars. Waifu wars. Knickknack. Is that journalist girl's name? Merle. Or Merle. 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 Yeah. Merle. Yeah. Yeah. Merle yeah. Strife. Yeah. Merle mm. Strife. Um, any reason why? Usually give reasons, so I'm just wondering. I just liked her, like... She brought a lot of levity to the series that I, I enjoyed at times. Oh, okay. And I did. I thought her character arc was probably the strongest of the characters. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Realm. Uh, m- millions knives. <laughs> millions knives. That's mm-hmm. my one. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, Vorn. Brad. Uh, the second in command of the uh, ship five. Yeah, ship, ship five. five. Yeah. yeah. Um. I actually really like Millions Knives in this segment. Yes. I know he doesn't show up very often, but but the times he does show up, I think were really yeah. really some of the best mm-hmm. parts of the of the series for me. Oh, I think his for his introduction scene was stunning. Mm-hmm. The the one where he shows up as a full-grown adult with Vash or the yeah, one where he shows up like as a child. Yeah, where he just wrecks the entire town. Yeah. yeah. No. Like he has I think he he has some of the best moments in the series and I personally love his interactions with Vash and Vash and Wolfwood. Of course I'm a fan of Vash and Wolfwood. Like I love mm-hmm. Vash and Wolfwood. And in the original series one of them would have been my wife, but in this case I just I like what they did with Millions Knives. So. Mm. Yeah. Millions Knives. Um so I think I could be wrong about it, but I wanted to bring up um, so in the first episode when we see like the the newspaper that's describing like the um, the tornado or whatever Vash the Stampede and there's that little mm. character drawing of him not his wanted poster but the one that they're looking at the first time when they go to like mm-hmm. find an interview uh. pretty sure that's a direct art reference to the original series because it looks like the original series art I think you're right because mm. I looked at it and I immediately yeah. recognized him from like promotion images I've seen of the original series yeah because the original series is a very different aesthetic and I, I, I thought that was a nice nod mm-hmm. to kind of the, the character um, and the original way that it looked. He has a much sharper look in the original series. In this series, he has a much more baby-faced look. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's just the way that all of the characters are drawn. Yeah. Because all of the characters follow a much different, like, drawn style in the original series. It's much mm-hmm. sharper. Um, as a lot of 90s anime tend to have, like, harder lines, mm-hmm. sharper edges. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing I did like, though, um, you might have mentioned it, but I might have just missed it, um, it was in the final episode when uh, Vash kind of wakes up from his mm-hmm. cocoon form. He mm-hmm. gets kind of that little spiky hair again. Yeah! <laughs> so in, in the original series, Vash's hair just straight stands up like that. Yes. Wow. All the time. Yeah. It's fucking great. Let me see if I can pull up a... It was a nice little. It, it was a nice little nod back to the uh, how he looked originally. Although he did get more purple after the. Uh... Yeah, because that's how he looks in the original series. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah um, and his hair is always kind of like up like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a different vibe. Yes. So, I, I was really a fan. Yeah. Um, I I I liked the the difference in art, like the different way that they showed these characters in this series, though. So I'm not like complaining. Oh, I have zero problem with the art. Yeah. 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 I think it looks great. I think it looks great. I think it works really well with landscapes and scale. Like you really feel the scale of the world with the using the 3D art style, and Mm -hmm. then like when they're in the spaceship during the prologue section, Mm -hmm. that was stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do we have any recommendations? based on this I feel like this Uh, series has the exact same like structure I think it's a little cleaner about that structure actually and it's a little bit uh, despite my complaints it's more well paced but it has the exact same structure as Jojo's Bizarre Adventure part one (laughs) Um, (laughs) I remember I watched Cowboy Bebop because of this yeah Um, so like maybe Cowboy Bebop I also think maybe you could 86? A little bit. Mm. A little yeah, bit. Because it, 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 it does it does it does kind of match the vibe a, a little vibe. bit. Yeah. 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 Um, it yeah. reminds me a lot of um hang on. I gotta find something. I guess you as far as talking. setting Cowboy Bebop matches with this pretty closely, but in terms of overall story, they're kind of different. So I would say Gundam, because it kind of, like, uh, depending on which Gundam you watch, there are these, like, uh, ideology, uh, kind of fights. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. 
Um, I, Stargate Universe specifically. Ooh. I'm I'm not suggesting original Stargate or mm. I mean you could go to maybe like original Stargate or Stargate um, Atlantis, but Stargate Universe gave me a lot of similar but vibes somewhat mm. at times mm -hmm. um, to this because it's a, it's kind of another one that focuses a lot on the characters because of the situation that they're in. Right. Um, and the, the kind of the main conflict isn't necessarily with someone who's evil, but someone who's just antagonistic and taking a different perspective, mm -hmm. you know? Anyway, so Stargate Universe for me. Um, um, my recommendation honestly would be, and it's, it's definitely a more, um, action oriented than this show is. I mean, there's, there's a lot of action in this show already, but I think this one is more so is, uh, Gurren Lagann actually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's got a kind of a, a similar, um... A similar prem or not I wouldn't say premise, but a similar uh, setting. Mm. Similar setting. Yeah. It's it's hard for me to think up a lot of um, suggestions for this because this is not the typical thing that I watch. I mean I'm mm. sure, you know, this is the sort of thing that Nick Knack would probably not assume I'd watch if he didn't know that I'd already seen the older one, you know? Yeah, like, the older and, one I could guess off era alone. Yeah, la, mm. but like this isn't sort of the normal thing that I watch. Even the older one, like while it was shonen, it's not the sort of thing I would have deliberately sought out unless it was just available to me. Mm. Uh, at least with my with my anime taste, um, it it did just appear to me, and so that's why I watched it originally. Mm. But yeah, so it, it's hard for me to think of other similar series is because I don't watch very many other similar series mm. in general. I just don't watch things like this very often. Um, but I, I did enjoy it, like, a lot. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I think I figured out the best gun that fits this, uh, Iron, it's the Iron Blood Orphans, I think, fits oh, the best with this yeah. one. Yeah. I heard good things about that one. Yeah, I cannot wait to watch that. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Anyways, I, I guess that's, that's it for this time. Yeah. Um, so... What we've got is... Let me check. Wait, I hold got... on. Are you going to throw... Like, are we going to see part two for the hat or for you? I don't know yet. Depends on when part two comes mm. out. Yeah, because part two doesn't have... We don't know when it's coming out yet. They're still working on it. Okay, what about original then? The original's already in the hat. Yeah, the original's yeah, still But there. will it come out for you or for the hat? <sighs> I don't know. Mm. That depends... I, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I I mean I don't think it I don't think it's super important that we go watch the original right now. You yeah. know, so it's not something that I'd be like submitting like in the next time or two mm -hmm. per se. The original has a very different vibe. It's basically an entirely different show because it's much more of a shonen. Yeah. You know, like comedy mm -hmm. as opposed to this. Yeah, so. this this was very much like somber and like kind of more mm, serious. melancholic. It was more is it, it was more like almost like a drama in a way. Yeah. Mm. I do appreciate. I went off talking about westerns. The actual genre for this is space western. <laughs> <laughs> that make, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Space western has been a like thriving genre. Yeah. So I can. Cowboy I can... Bebop. <laughs> Star Wars is more yeah, of a Star space Wars western is... than it is an actual sci-fi show. It's a space opera. Yeah, but it I takes a opera. lot out of space western. Mm. Yeah. That's like where you get the Tatooine, the Han Solo stuff that they really like coming back to. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, but so um, Vorn picked our next anime and we are watching My Next Life as a Villainess All Roots Lead to Doom X. Yes. Was it a random on Vorn? That was, that was a that was not my throw out. So it probably was. Yeah, no, it was Rando. It was Rando hat. Yeah. But it definitely was. That definitely wasn't. It came from you, though. Did it really? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was probably one of the ones I had in my hat. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So it said it is born. All right. Yeah. yeah. But it's Tommy for a season two. It's been so long since we watched season one. I know, right? Holy shit. <laughs> This was a this was a one to come back to. Anyways. So, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Try harder, everyone. Mm -hmm.